and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today, we'll be talking with Gresham's Ambleside Meals on Wheels people to find out what they're doing to continue their very important work. Meals on Wheels people has been working in our community for 50 years, producing and serving 8,000 nutritious meals five days a week. They depend on 600 volunteers every day to help prepare and deliver these meals to the homebound elderly. We're going to find out how the East County location, the Ambleside Center, has adapted their role in the community during this time of physical distancing. Welcome to the show, Program Manager Brianna Winningham. Hi, Brianna. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. You know, it's, it's, uh, I've known you for a while now, and one of the very first things I learned from you when, when we very first talked was that the social interactions, the connection between your delivery drivers and your, um, and your clients is every bit as important as the food that you deliver. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering now with this COVID-19 crisis, how that's been affected. It has to have been majorly impacted. How are you dealing with that? That has definitely been the hardest piece to figure out. Um, what we've been doing is we have two different programs. One, we're doing well checks. So halfway through a client's delivery cycle, we're calling to say, how are you doing? Um, can we help you find any resources? And also just, you know, do you need to talk, do you need to, talk to somebody? Yeah. Um, if it's somebody who's indicating that they're doing fine, but they just really want to talk and they just really miss people, we're putting them on what's called a friendly chat program. Um, with that, we have volunteers that are just calling just to kind of shoot the breeze. How are you doing? Oh. And let's chat about things. And that's been a really great program. We're getting a lot of positive feedback, not just from the clients, but from the volunteers who are often just feeling that this is a very rewarding thing to do. Wow. I love that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that is so important that, that, um, that social connection to people, because a lot of your clients are people that are homebound, right? Or yeah. they just, sometimes that's their only connection to people all week long. Is that right? Yeah. And I would say right now what's happening is you have a lot of people who are homebound, who maybe weren't homebound until suddenly mid-March. So anytime somebody kind of moves into that homebound category, you have kind of this process of like grieving and you're not going as much and you're kind of trying to relearn your patterns. And essentially that just happened to, you know, hundreds of people all at once. And it's a hard transition and very little time to adjust. So I would say some of our seniors that are used to coming into the senior center and doing classes and eating lunch in person are going through something similar to what we're seeing with school kids who are suddenly kind of going, I want my friends. <laughs> You know? Right, right. Um, and so, you know, that has been a really important piece to try to work on and to make sure that we are, yes, feeding them. That's what we do at Meals on Wheels, but that we're also really meeting that other need of, you know, we realize that you as a person have more needs than just food. I know that you um, have probably had a, a lot more people contacting you then, right, with this, because, I mean, you know, if I didn't have work to do and I was home alone by myself, you know, I, I would probably be one of those people calling because I don't want to go into the grocery stores right now. I have somebody doing my shopping, but uh, so how, how much has it increased during this time? So across the organization, we've seen about a 17% increase. Um, and so I would say two things with that. One is that we've increased that many um, people that we're serving, which is already a huge number. Um, two is that all of those are now going to home delivery format as opposed to some of them coming into our centers. So it has been, you know, yeah, there's been some catch up to try to figure out how to do this. <laughs> I bet. Um, yeah, but it's working. And I, I have seen a big number of people calling who have not used our services before. Perhaps they've not used any services before. I mean, this really is foreign territory for people. And it's been nice to be able to say, okay, we're here if you need us. Uh, what a great feeling to be, to know that you are so essential to the, yeah. to the, you know, the health of the community. Uh, so have you repurposed some of the um, employees who work in the center then to deliver? Yeah, and that was actually the hardest the hardest part the first week probably was coming to work to do your job, but your job isn't really there. So you're just kind of trying to figure out what now, mm -hmm. um, after, you know, after a while now we've all figured out our new roles, but it's really, um, 
it's really shown us how our emphasis on just working as a team as opposed to specific you do this and I do this uh, is paying off. We have somebody who used to cook the meals every day and now, now she's doing deliveries and helping call clients. And that's a really big shift. Wow. Well, I can imagine. Uh, but, but, you know, it sounds like they're pulling together and doing a great job. We're doing no contact delivery. So a driver is walking up uh, to a door and we've tried to encourage people to have tables or something or a doorknob where they can hang um, our meals from a distance. They can ensure that the meals um, go to the right person. So, yeah, unfortunately that has been hard for things like how are you doing and let's have a chat on your front porch, but it's keeping everybody safe. And the big thing is that we are reducing the amount of times that we're connecting with these seniors in person, because, you know, if there was a problem, if somebody did come down with an illness, we just want to have as few people impacted as possible. Right. And right. that's, um, it, this is the way to do that, even though it has drastically changed how we do things. Yeah. So is there, um, have you gotten very much feedback from your volunteers about how they feel about all these changes? Has it been hard for them? I think at first it was really hard, but now we found that over time as everybody, our volunteers, our staff, and our clients have adjusted to a new normal, we're able to have those conversations again, even from afar. Um, and actually, a lot of the volunteers that really felt like they're just missing their clients, and this was an important piece, and they want to be able to chat, they're actually now engaged in the program to call and check on um, uh. on our clients. And so we're you know, we're able to say, okay, you can still talk to them. And that's been really rewarding as well. Good, good. I'm sure it makes a world of difference to the people getting the calls on the other end as well. It does. Is, is there anything else that we should know about what Meals on Wheels people is doing right now or that, um, that you need from the public? Oh, you know, one thing that we just started doing was offering food boxes to clients. Um, and that has been really cool. I just want to highlight that because, you know, the, one of the big challenges that we faced um, going to once a week delivery was how do we get salad out to people? Um, it just wasn't going to be possible to give them enough salad for a week that wouldn't go bad. So we've started um, delivering fresh fresh produce and people just love it. You know, if a client gets something that they don't want, we're encouraging them to give it to their neighbor, give it to, you know, somebody and just kind of spread that love around. And it has been really helpful in that mind of just kind of everybody helps everybody. You know, if you have an elderly neighbor or if you haven't talked to your mother in a while, it's just time to just check in and say, how are you doing? I just want to know if you're okay. So. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And if they are not getting food, if they're not eating, then call us. Yeah. Call you. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Um, it really, so typically we do 60 and over. And then if they're homebound, we take it to them. If they're not, then we, they come into a center. We just want to say, if you're over 60 and you don't feel um, comfortable going to the store, you are now considered homebound. That is okay. And I talked to a gentleman uh, very recently who said, you know, I used to deliver meals on wheels and now I'm getting them and I kind of just feel like I'm taking. And I said, you could look at it that way or you could look at it as you gave when you could and then we give back when we can. So if you're one of these people that feels like this would be helpful to you, but you're feeling like, well, I've always been a giver, that's okay. That's the way yeah. the world works. That's, that's actually the perfect scenario because yeah. I, and that's what I always tell people. There's some time in your life you're going to require some help from somebody. Yeah. So give while you can and, and do that. And then, you know, then you don't have to feel bad about it later because it's, exactly. your, it's your turn. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you, Brianna, so much. I, I, yeah. I've always been impressed with the, the great job you do down there at Ambleside. So um, I, I hope it's not too long before we get to be neighbors again. <laughs> right. <laughs> right down the street. <laughs> yeah, yes. Hopefully not, not too long. But thanks very much and, and um, keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. And thank Bye. you to our viewers for watching today and from all of us at Metro East Community Media. Stay safe and stay healthy.